has a ripped o-ring. Well then! Alright guys, so... <clears throat> been, I don't know, a couple days <laughs> since uh, I uploaded part four and since I changed a few more things around and ordered a couple more parts. I did a bunch of stuff and didn't really record any of it just because it was really cold and I was just getting frustrated and also I couldn't find my little block attachment to get the camera onto the tripod or whatever so I just didn't feel like dealing with it but uh, I changed a few things around and just got some parts in the mail today so I'm gonna put those in and basically bring you through that whole process and yeah so uh, here's what we've done so far and I'll go over the parts that I ordered alright then so uh, as you can see it's kinda of a little bright over there but uh yeah I put a little side mount slash top mount intercooler in there and I don't know. Hopefully that'll cool the airs down some more because that pipe right here is really close to the manifold and it just was getting really warm. <coughs> so hopefully that'll do some stuff. Um, I also, well, first you can see I took the skeleton forming from the underside of the hood. put a little vent thing in there. I still don't really know how I feel about it. <clears throat> um, I wanted it to be like subtle, kinda, but still large enough to like function and funnel a bunch of air down into there. So, I don't know. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look horrible. It is what it is. Um, you can see I have some Sharpie up there. I was going to do it up there and then just like make a funnel right into it, but uh, I didn't really like that idea after I really thought about it. So I just went with that and I don't know. You can see with the <coughs> skeletonizing cuts out, it goes right in there and then a bunch of it is going to hit that aluminum fitting and uh, ideally get funneled down in there and also maybe some of the intercooler back or the um, air filter back there rather so I don't know not, I'm not going to be able to drive it in the rain as much I actually drove it out in the snow the other night and what I did was just took a big rag put it on top of my headlight and like pinched it down to block this hole and that seemed to work I didn't get any snow in my engine bay so I could do that if I ever need to drive this in the rain or whatever but so that's that and then we'll go over some of the parts I ordered so what I ordered was if you saw any of the other parts you could see it's still it's lean it uh needs more fuel still to try and get a little more fuel into her I ordered a couple things to help with that um, one of the things I ordered that's not here yet is uh, 255 uh, LPH fuel pump. Um, I just went with the eBay one. It was like 25 bucks free shipping. Um, according to the whatever seller or whatever, like they like 800 of them have been sold. So I would imagine if that many have been sold, uh, a high ratio of them have to work. So hopefully I'll look at that and it'll work pretty good. Um, along with that, I ordered an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Again, straight off eBay, it was like 20 bucks free shipping. Um, same thing, like, you know, a few hundred of them have been sold, so hopefully that'll work for me fine. And I also ordered another little cheap eBay sequential blow off out because mine no work. So hopefully this one will at least work. Uh, it's at least, it's eBay, but at least it's brand new. The other one I got when I got the intercooler piping, and it never worked a day in its life. So, I'll show you guys the two things I did get. 
Uh, this is the fuel pressure regulator. No name box. Um, it had some hose in there. One for vacuum, one for fuel line. Don't know if I'm going to use those. I probably will have to because I don't really think I have much fuel line. Um, it came with a bag of little accessories here. Uh, a couple hose clamps. Another like bung fitting thingy and the Allen wrench to adjust this guy on the top. And then <clears throat> it came with this, which is the block off plate for the fuel pressure, or the, for the fuel rail rather, that you'd put in place of your stock fuel pressure regulator. But this I can't use. Um, this is a SR20 fuel pressure regulator, but it's the same style as the GA, where it's right in the center of the two holes. And you can see this one, two holes, and this is way down there. So what I'm going to end up doing probably is cutting this up, cutting this whole area off of this flat piece down here, cutting this probably like right there, and just welding the straight portion right onto that. And got to take my time with that because if I get a leak through there, I will know it. <clears throat> and then fuel pressure regulator itself is uh like I said just super generic cheap cheap little freaking gauge on there um yeah I already cut this up a little bit just to mess around with like where I'm gonna mount it but yeah hopefully she works and then the little blow off valve guy um yeah, I don't know that's that It also came with uh, one of these, so if you're putting it on a car, like a stock car, you could, you know, essentially plug that into a hose or whatever, not have to weld anything. Uh, came with a C-clip, don't know if I'll use that. Came with this little bag of accessories, two little T-fittings of different sizes, and then a couple clamp, clampy clamps, I don't know, I hate those things. Uh, this thing, which I have no clue what it's supposed to be for. <coughs> Probably not even going to bother using that. And then came with four little zip ties that seem of really cheap quality that I probably won't use. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what you get for, I think the blow off valve was like basically 30 bucks. Fuel pressure regulator was basically 20 bucks. So that's what you get for 50 bucks off eBay. Uh, kind of a lot, but not a whole lot. It's, you know, thinking about neither of them possibly working correctly but hopefully they work we've been having good luck so far in this guy in this build here so um yeah i'm gonna get to pulling some stuff apart uh maybe do a little time lapse and stuff and catch back up with you guys once i do some stuff all right uh let's show you where we're at now uh, i got the fuel pressure regulator off um <clears throat> Here is the one from the GA. You can see it would normally be positioned like that on the motor if you're looking from the front, sitting in the return like that. And I'm basically going to make one that just sends it out that way that I could send right into the side of that guy. So I took the one that I had from the SR and cut the thingy off at the end here that guy and then cut the little flange off that holds it down that guy and I just shoved a punch through there a little bit so I could help that center it and I'm just gonna weld that right like that cross fingers for no leaks So uh, I got some shit done. 
And it turns out that A, actually, um, that little plate that I was going to try and make, or that I did try and make for um, the fuel rail or whatever adapter, this little guy, uh, it didn't work. It leaked. I tried like three different times. It kept leaking. Um, so what I actually ended up doing that I'm pretty sure is working right now is that stock little adapter plate that I said wouldn't work. I made it work. I basically just re-drilled two holes uh, perpendicular or parallel or whatever. I don't know the correct word. It's been a while since high school. Put them in a straight line in correlation to the hole for the gas itself. Threw uh, a O-ring in there. Tightened it down and I don't think that's leaking but I figured out that uh, this injector right here is leaking which is no good because that means that it's probably been leaking for a little while which may be the reason why I've been running lean because that cylinder hasn't been getting enough fuel so I don't know I'm gonna pull the upper intake manifold off and see if I can't devise a way to suck that down in there some more and see if I can get that to stop leaking and then I think we're good to go I didn't see anywhere else that's leaking fuel so that should be the last Last little spot. I think I, I think I said this already, but I got the blow off valve in there already too. So I'm gonna get to that and catch up in a bit. I found the problem. My injector in that cylinder has a ripped O-ring. Well, I think my issue is my fuel pump. Or I have a really shitty cheap eBay fuel pressure regulator. Both are likely. I can't get it to go past that, which is pretty close to four bar, but not quite four bar. So I'm kind of thinking that could be my issue. Um, just because the fuel pump struggles to get it anywhere near four bar. I have to have this thing cranked all the way almost like almost all the way down which in theory which should be like a hundred PSI and the most I'm seeing is like nearing 60 like pretty close to 4 bar like maybe like 55 um so I don't know I took it for a spin it was still basically the same as it normally is you know crazy lean spots um so Next thing I'm going to try is, probably after the holiday, Thanksgiving is in tomorrow, um, maybe like next week, uh, go and get like a KA24 MAF or a SR20 MAF or a N60 Maximum MAF and try and do a blow through setup as opposed to the draw through that I have set up right now. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get there when we get there, and yeah, like I said, not really too much else to do until I can figure out the fuel, cause this thing kind of sucks to drive right now with this stupid fuel issue. So I'm kind of dumb. Uh, I've been telling myself forever that I need to change my fuel filter. And I keep forgetting, keep forgetting, keep forgetting, keep forgetting. And I've never changed the fuel filter in this car. Well, I just took the fuel filter off. And I'm pretty sure, like there's no markings on this, but I'm pretty sure when I changed the fuel filter location that I looked it up and like put it back on the, you know, the way it's supposed to go in and out. But this is it. This is how I had it set in where this was the in and I had it coming out this. But... <laughs> When it's like that, when I blow on the bottom, you can barely, it's so hard to blow through. Both ways are so hard to blow through. So, I honestly think I had a clogged fuel filter. Um, I don't have another fuel filter for B13, but I have this fuel filter, which is actually for 
the Mercury Mountaineer, like a V8. Um, we've had this for like a million years. We bought it for the vehicle. And then before we could put this on, the car blew up or whatever. So I have just had it forever. Um, I don't know. It's a lot bigger. Flows a lot faster. Um, I think there might have been like some bugs or like some spider webs down inside of it. So I'm going to hook it up and then just turn my fuel pump on and just like run some fuel through it a little bit. Like into just like a bottle to clean it out a little bit. And then I'm going to hook it up. And I'm really hoping that that could have been it because I don't know. I don't see any other reason why the stock fuel pump, unless like I was saying earlier, that it's literally just such a cheap fuel pump it can't go past, you know, whatever PSI. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the fuel filter. Alright guys, so uh, I definitely think fuel filter was part of my issue. Yesterday, I couldn't get it to go past, like, right here. Like basically 35 PSI without the car on. And now, I can get it basically up to 4 bar uh, with the car off. So, that's pretty cool. Um, probably definitely once I get the fuel pump in now, I could probably set this to a lot higher fuel pressure. And then hopefully we should be good. Just to show you guys, this is what I ended up doing for my fuel filter. Uh, it's kind of ghetto, but no leaks. It's at, like I said, like a little over 40 PSI right now, and it's not leaking anywhere. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, basically just to show you guys what I end up doing. To Since I have all my relays and all that stuff like tucked into the bumper, it's hard to get to, um, to turn the pump on. I literally just ran a hard wire from the top of the pump up to my battery. Also, I'm not, I don't know if I've touched on it before, but obviously you can see where the intercooler is now. Um, my battery, my battery, my battery is uh, relocated into the passenger footwell. So I might throw the hood back on and stuff like that, and then. I gotta put the stock wheels back on because these 17s aren't balanced and they vibrate really bad. But I don't know. I'm gonna possibly see if just doing the fuel filter makes a difference because already I'm able to get fuel pressure that I wasn't able to yesterday. So I don't know. That could be it. Well, I just took it for a drive with uh, that new fuel filter and. It still, like, goes hard lean, so that's not cool. Um, I don't know. Hopefully the fuel pump changes some stuff, or else new math and probably bigger injector time. But the ball cup works. to work out. Still need more fuel, I think. I don't know. I just want it to run good. Um, so yeah, next step is wait for a fuel pump. Hopefully it'll be here tomorrow. If not, probably Monday. It is now Thanksgiving. Happy late Thanksgiving to anybody who celebrates. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Hopefully the fuel pump Solves it like hopefully it's still just a matter of the stock fuel pump not being able to keep up but I don't know anymore We'll see
We'll get to it when we get to it, right? doing a pull I don't know if you can see it in that clip but something fucking happened I can't figure it out so I'm just gonna try and drive it home or at least to the next exit because I don't have a cell phone Sure, we'll be able to get it home pretty close now, but something's definitely wrong. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I think I have like an intercooler piping popped off or something, but I couldn't find anything like that, so maybe I ripped a coupler or something. I don't know, I'm gonna have to pull it in the garage when I get home, but it's running like insane rich. I know that's not insane rich, but it does, trust me. Like, see that? At cruising speed, I shouldn't be having that. Because, like, it'll still make boost. See that? But, it doesn't feel like it's making good boost, and like I said, it's just running crazy lean. So, I'm hoping that's what it is. Also, when it does make a little bit of boost, when I let off, I don't hear the blow off out, but I do hear a psh. So I'm assuming that's the air shoving out whatever leak I have in my coupler or whatever. So hopefully that's all it is. Well, as you can see, in those last couple of clips, she's not happy. Um, just trying to do a little pull. Gonna do a little bite on the highway down in Mexico. And, um, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, I think like a intercore coupler blew a hole in it or something like that, which I don't know what, how that would happen at like 10 psi. Um, but that's what it seems like. Uh, it's running like super duper rich and just doesn't want to stay running at all. So, I don't know. But um, it's kind of late, so I'm not really going to dick around out here too long. I kind of just want to look over everything a little better than I could on the side of the highway. And hopefully, cross my fingers, find a ripped coupler. Because I have a couple of spare of those. But I'm gonna get to that and catch up with you guys. Doing momentum. Fuck yeah, I found the problem. Well, I don't know. It's kind of actually stupid. Um, too much boost? Question mark. See the blow off valve. See the O-ring in the C-clip here. Um, those aren't supposed to be like that. So at least uh, that's an easy fix, hopefully. Um, but I don't see why that popped out, to be honest.
that's not cool. Alright, uh, next day, um, figured out why the blow-off valve decided to make a swift exit like that. Um, basically, I didn't put it on right. Uh, where is it? I don't know where it is, but when I got this intercooler piping with this blow-off valve on it, um, it had like a red o-ring in here and it was like a lot softer material than like a normal rubber o-ring would be um, and it was too small like I could easily you know spin around my blow-off valve at will and uh, this one that I bought it came with like a nice fatter thicker rubber just normal black rubber o-ring so I used that and I didn't realize when I put the snap ring in that I didn't seat it all the way, like it popped in there a little bit, but it didn't pop all the way just because of the feather o-ring, so I just now had to like really work it in there, and it's definitely sat all the way now, because before with the other blow-off valve, and even how it was before, I could easily move this around, and I can barely, like unless I put in almost all of my force, can move this, so that sucker's really on there now. Okay. Well, the shit I was waiting for finally came in the mail. Uh, the fuel pump I ordered uh, took like a week and a half to get here. Sucks waiting for parts. <laughs> um, yeah, finally came in today. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. But first I'll go over what you get for $25, 255 liters per hour fuel pump off of eBay. Um, yeah. This is basically what you get here, uh, fuel pump itself, uh, no labels or stampings or markings or anything like that on it. Um, you get your little sock here, you get the plug, um, this is a little clip thing to hold on the sock, you get a little piece of fuel hose for the top I'm assuming two little hose clamps and then a piece of rubber for the bottom for sound deadening or to hold it in the thing in the tank or something I'm assuming and then also this piece of foam which I think is also just for like sound deadening um yeah so that's it and uh hopefully this sucker cranks out some pressure but uh <clears throat> yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get to my fuel pump now, which if anybody doesn't know, there's an access hole right under your rear seats. I don't have rear seats or nothing, so super easy to get to for me. Alright, so I got the pump out. Um, any of the like hardcore Nissan followers probably already noticed that uh, that fuel sock was different for the pump I ordered. Um, here is the stock pump. Also, the pump was like remarkably smaller than this sucker. But uh, there's a stock pump. There's a stock sock. I basically just adapted it to this pump because it does fit on there. And then also, since this pump is so much smaller, I had to like use all that foam and shit to like make it large enough to fit into this little canister thing, which is then what clips in on the inside of the tank. So now I basically just gotta solder these to the plug, the existing stock plug this guy and then toss her in there and cross the fingers and hopefully it works so this is what I came up with <clears throat> um, like I said this is the 255 it's much smaller than the stock one so I had to like wrap it in some rubber and then I also drilled some holes and clamped it down on there so that's not going to slide around. Uh, it also offsets this thing so I had to cut that a little bit on the bottom. I had to put the stock sock in the bottom. Um, this is my little solder job. I didn't even have enough heat shrink to go over everything. Jesus. Um, so uh, yeah we're gonna really have to do some hoping on this one. But I'm going to throw it out in there and then see what happens. Okay, uh, everything's in the car. 
everything is should be bolted up good enough. Um, so now let's go ahead and turn the key for the first time and recheck everything for leaks and then start the car. I don't see any leaks. No leaks so far. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key off and on one more time. Hmm. It's not priming a second time. Hmm. Uh, I guess we'll just try and start it, see what happens. I'd say this baby's definitely cranking out a bit more power because, uh, yeah. Wow, that was aggressive. I drove my car like 70 miles and it was fine. And then, <laughs> oh wow. Uh, that was a little sketchy. Um, so yeah, this pump obviously can crank out some, uh, some more power than the last one. So, that's looking positive. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that's going to be the last little sketchy thing we have happen now, and should be good to go. I threw some clamps, this is where it popped off from right here, because I didn't have a clamp here or there, but I drove the car, like, a decent amount with the other pump, and the whole, everything just like this, just with the other fuel pump, and that didn't pop off, so. Obviously this bad boy is cranking out some more liters per hour. But uh yeah, we'll see if we can't get it started now. focus on that or not, but she's doused. Alright, I got all my spark plugs out. Um, I'm just going to go inside and chill for 10-15 minutes now, I guess, and let that evaporate. Maybe when I come back out, mm, I was going to say I want to take the compressor and shoot some air down in there, but I don't want any of the debris that's, uh, chilling down like above where the threads are on the block or the head or whatever um, I don't want that getting blown down in the cylinder so I'm not going to blow it right down there I'm just going to let it sit and evaporate I kind of figured it out uh, it was just super flooded I had to put a different battery in it so it could crank it over fast enough to spark it fast enough to burn off all the fuel and shit in there but um I don't know can't see shit uh, it runs. I could definitely get the fuel pressure higher if I needed to. Um, I have it uh, at idle, just like a tad over four bar right now. And uh, I don't know, it's raining out. I don't really want to go out in the rain. But I really want to drive it around and see if anything's different. So, looks like I'm going to double check everything and then go take her for a rip. Uh, 
Um, so I drove it around a little while, not very long, just like a little bit around the block at 4 bar, or just over 4 bar, whatever I had it at. And uh, it definitely seemed a little bit better. Uh, when I would really get into it, the air-fuel ratio was definitely like a number lower. It was like 11, 12 maybe. I don't know. But uh, So that's the start. Um, it still kind of had lean spot before getting into boost. Um, and that's what I mainly want to fix. So I'm going to crank it. I got it. Uh, just got to clip it at like just a little over 5 bar now. Like 70-something PSI. Um, I think. Or like 60-something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're going to try it at that, and then it's still not good at that, and then we'll crank it to 7 bar, and then it will go to 8 bar, <coughs> or, no, we got it at 5 bar now, if that doesn't work, well, then we'll go to 6 bar, if that doesn't work, then we'll go to 7, yeah, <laughs> so, I'm going to put some more gas in it, I have like gas in a gas can, i got to throw that in there, and then, uh, go back for another drive. And uh, this time I'll get some clips of what she's doing. Well, something's messed up again. She's overheating and running super duper rich like when we had that uh, boost leak from the uh, block out, so I don't know what's up.
I might have pushed her a little too hard. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's going on besides the fact that it was overheating. Um, it was seemed like it was running really, really rich. So, I don't know what that's about. We definitely, definitely still got some bugs to work out, guys. But, um, I think that kind of solves the leaning out issue for the most part at least. So that's cool. Um, I still think I'm going to try and get uh, a larger math, like an SR math or something like that. And uh, just basically get it dialed in more. i got to keep driving it, keep messing with the settings and just get the bugs worked out. And then also like eventually like um, maybe upgrade to something else besides the SAFC because I know those are kind of like as basic as you can get but we'll see what happens for now though I think that'll be the end of part five um, got the fuel I was looking for no more lean spots if anything it's running a little bit rich now um, when I got back and parked it the fuel was more around like six bar than it was five I was like in between five and six bar so Bunch of fuel pressure fixed our uh, fuel issue. It was definitely the fuel pump. Just not being able to put out the pressure that we needed. But make sure you guys uh, like the videos and uh, subscribe to stick along for whatever step is going to be next. And uh, yeah. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to ask, and I'll, uh, I'll get back to them as soon as I can. But, alright guys.